Derek was an incredible pioneer and he was an amazing inspiration to me and to everybody that's worked at DPA and many people outside of the practice as well. His passion for the subject I think is unrivaled because it wasn't a passion of ego, it was a passion of professionalism. He was inspired by many, many other people. When he met Frank Lloyd Wright, he talked about the Johnson & Johnson factory. Frank Lloyd Wright talked about daylight to Derek. And then Derek had this incredible opportunity to then meet Corbusier, who talked to him about Rochon. And I think those meetings were fundamental to Derek wanting to focus his career on lighting. I believe Derek did pioneer lighting consultancy as a profession, setting up the first recognisable lighting design practice. In the early days, Derek quickly became renowned as an architect who had this specialist lighting knowledge. He won the chance to light the Mandarin Hotel in Hong Kong. This is the first Mandarin Hotel. He met the designer of that hotel, Don Ashton, and I remember Derek saying, that he was just an inspiration. He could sit down and start painting a picture of a room at the Mandarin, and by the end of the day, he had a beautiful piece of artwork that really relayed the passion and the vision that Don had for that room. And then Derek worked with Don to look at ways in which that could be appropriately lit. Another important project to Derek was being asked to join a competition team to floodlight Westminster Abbey. Derek produced some inspirational black and white sketches which really had heart and soul. It had light and shade. The team duly won that competition and Derek was allowed to implement that lighting scheme for the Abbey which really held on to that, that vision Derek had. Derek was very, very passionate about the work he carried out at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Derek used uplighting to the two flank ends and downlighting where he introduced a catwalk which meant that the fixtures were accessible. So Derek was very, very careful about how lighting equipment looked in the daytime when it wasn't on. Something that's commonplace for us today, but not then. When he started back in the, in the late 50s, there were hardly any um, lighting designers. When we first were doing lighting design, you had to explain to architects what it was you did, why they should employ you, why we were important to a project. So it has taken a long time to build up, and even when I started in the, in the early 80s, uh, there were only three or four practices in, in the UK, and there were maybe only three or four or five people in each practice. Today, the practice has five offices. We have a team of 54 people, all from various different backgrounds, which again has been a deliberate policy. We don't lose our staff very often. We have very solid workforce who stay with us for years and that experience and that expertise stays within the business. So we have people who've been with us for 10, 15 years or more than that. Because we have low staff turnover, we keep all that quality of design expertise in the business. The fact that we've we found some absolutely outstanding individuals and they stay with the practice for a long time, I think says a lot about the way we conduct ourselves.